So this is just a quick rundown of everything I use when I go solo camping. This is all like my kitchen stuff and all of this stuff I keep inside this container and I keep it outside. But I keep an outside container. It's like in the back of my truck or if you have a trunk. And the purpose of like having an outside container and separating like your inside container. Your inside container should have like, you know, gas cans anything that might explode so to keep that out of the sun and perishable uh, food items but everything else if you keep it outside you don't have to unpack it you could just leave it and like use it for your next trip if you go camping a lot just a quick rundown and i've minimized this a lot like before i had a lot more but it was just too much to carry how i broke it down was just having one inside container and one outside container per trip i use it as like a, a cutting board when i'm cutting a lot of vegetables I have like dry ingredients too but yeah so cutting board, my knife, and then I have a spatula, tongs, piece of pots. So you know what, instead of doing it like that, putting it away, I'll just explain it as I go. I have one cast iron frying pan, three uh, meal prep containers, three of these like little tin cans, about a Dollar Tree, one metal plate, and this was actually the dog bowl of my dog that recently uh, we had to put him down. And in remembrance of him, his name was Sancho. We had him, me, me and my family, we had him for 18 years. But this is his dog bowl, so I'm using it on my solo camping trips to remember him. A uh, bag of coffee filters, because I have. You know this, you could buy it on Amazon for like 15 bucks. This is very efficient because it's metal. So I just put a filter on top so the cleaning is very easy. You know, oh, this is actually important. Plastic cutlery, dude. This is really key in like solo camping. This is very, I would keep in handy. Coffee grinds, sugar, and then I have popcorn kernels, dry flour, and bag of rice, and pasta. So it's just like whenever, if I, if I can't like go to the market and I'm hungry, at least I have food. Always. And tin foil, chopsticks I made from sticks from like the river. All your spices, I would say keep it in a bag. And these are all out, outside spices and like vegetable oil. And so it's just like whenever you're cooking, you don't have to like look for each individual like ingredient. You could just pull out the bag and have all the ingredients. I have this. I just, you know, my dad just recently gave me this because he saw my like solo camping trip. So he said if I needed a stove because I was using this. This just attaches on top of here. And then this is just a wind block. I was using this for all my other solo camping trips and it works fine. But I'll be honest, having this, even though it's like carrying like another like piece of luggage, this is way better. This table I bought at a thrift shop for five bucks. And I'm really excited. I'm really happy about this recent purchase. I bought this chair for six dollars. Oh, and this is a, a cup I bought at a thrift shop. The same thrift shop for dollar twenty. Yeah, she gave me a deal. It's dollar twenty-five. But yeah. So this is all the kitchen stuff that I use when I go solo camping. These tin cans to put inside my car. And then this is just my container for outside. And I don't really touch this much. This is just ready to go for next time. It's a convenient, efficient, no, efficient camping trip tip. This is a quick rundown of like all my camping equipment. I have like an 8x10 tarp. And then I have like the six person tent and then I have a sleeping bag. I have this shovel with the sharpener and this uh, functions as an axe. I have like the sleeping mat, my power inverter or power converter. I have a single person tent, this mat. I have a sheet where I, I tied rock to like the corners so I could use it for shade. Just a bag of rags, some carabiners. Some, like a, I have a glove, mosquito repellent, a little bit of rope, some hooks and a knife. I have an extra blanket. This folds out into a blanket. I bought this is I use it as like a sleeping mat. On top of on top of this, it's one of those um, like heavy duty blankets. Honestly, it's like really rough, but it works well. This I bought at a thrift shop too for twelve dollars. And yeah. That's pretty much all the gear I use every time I go solo camping. It's not a lot. So, because it's not a lot, that means you can do it too.
and this is what I use to like charge my stuff when I'm out I have this Jupiter converter if you don't have one of those power banks like a solar panel to charge your stuff if you're recording out like when you're doing like solo camping right converter is only $35 and because you're trying to like save the battery of your car life I'm only charging my MacBook and portable battery this one 2100 so this I can charge all my GoPro batteries as well as my cell phone as well as my flashlight all from this one device instead of like plugging all your electricals you know you just have to conserve energy because if your car doesn't start then like kind of out of luck and then the MacBook because this charger can't charge the MacBook so I'll leave it on for like two hours max because I don't want it to keep running but I would highly recommend there's this portable power bank that could charge laptops with the solar panel and it's $140 and that's something I have to invest in because I'm worried if one day you know one little one little watt too much my car won't start then i'm stuck so that's how i, I charge my uh camera gear when i'm out solo camping by myself without a solar panel power bank i have my macbook connected and then i have my portable battery just crack the window open a little and then Try to put the plugs, you know, down because I'm gonna take, I'm gonna close the hood, but not all the way, so my wires don't get snipped. Make sure your wires aren't like caught in anything. Okay, so what I'll do is look right here on the hood. Don't close it all the way. Yeah, and the hood, so the wires are all okay. And then. Off your car and then set your timer on your phone for two hours and then within two hours the MacBook will be like fully charged and the portable battery will be around like 50% and that'll last you like a day 